Well, hello, hello. This is Rose Arcy Jacquees. How are you doing? I'm bringing it to you today a quick little video. I love chicken fried steak. And I make my own seasoning coating for it. So what I've done, I already did all this to save on time of the video. This is the pre-part, then I'll come back when I get ready to cook it because this is my lunch hour. I'm working from home today. So I'm getting everything ready for tonight's supper. So what I have here is salt, and I'm using kosher salt. I sprinkle a little bit, and I don't do measurements, I just sprinkle. Italian seasonings. Black pepper. This is my homemade garlic powder. As you can see, I'm almost done. That's out of this jar, I got another jar. Onion powder, and we love these. We get these from Sam's. These are Kinders, and they're all kinds of seasonings. But I love to put this in any kind of a coating that I make. This is really some good stuff. And this one is the buttery steakhouse. Put it all together, and this is also going to be the same container that I'm going to use when I dip my chicken into it. And this is great for pork chops. Um, chicken fried steak so you kind of chicken you want to bake it fry it however and we're gonna cheat and we're gonna fry our chicken fried steak but I'm sorry because as far as I'm concerned that's the only way to eat chick homemade chicken fried steak and I always dip the meat in the flour solution with all my seasons and everything and then I dip it into a mixture of scr uh, scrambled raw eggs and milk I just pour a little bit of milk into my eggs and it just depends on how much I'm making of how much I use. This is why I don't measure. This I usually keep on hand and then I poured it in a baggie and then I only pour in here because you always have a bunch of extra left over. It's always better to put it, this is a little tip for all you newbies here, pour this in a baggie, pour just a little layer over it and then put a little bit more then drench your meat in there and then if you need to add more, then add some more because once you've coated this and you put protein in it, beef, chicken, beef, whatever it is that you're using, you can't reuse this again. So, this is a way for you to have this already made and ready and shelf stable for the next time you want to use it and you don't waste it because like me and hubby tonight, it's just me and him, there's no extras or nothing, so it's just for our dinner and our lunches for tomorrow. And so, um, we, well, this is enough, more than enough. And see, we go. That's all I did. You see what I was doing as I was talking? I was shaking. And it's, we're ready to roll. <laughs> so I'm just going to pour this in a baggie. And I'm going to label the baggie. And I'm just going to say, um, coating, meat coating, with seasoned meat coating. That's all I'm going to do is I'm going to label it and I'm going to date it in my little baggie. Two, two, maybe maybe three meals, and then this will be enough. But for us, because we're empty nesters, this is more than enough. Of course, if you have a bigger family or you're feeding more people, you want to make more. But the thing is, you can do make it as much as you want, and this is shelf-stable as long as you do not introduce any other protein to it or any eggs and milk. So we're good, we're set, and we're good to go. I will bring you back when I get to the next phase, which is going to be coating the the chicken and then I'm gonna fry it on my skillet and then we're gonna have ourselves some nice yummy fattening <laughs> dinner but oh well it is what it is all right take care we'll see you in a few minutes well actually we're gonna see you in a few hours I'll be back okay take care okay we are back to do the prayer. cooking of the dinner tonight got my flour seasoned flour Got my three eggs. I think three eggs are be enough. I did tenderize the meat just to make sure that it's extra soft. Not so much soft, easier to chew. But it's really thin cut, so it should be fine. And since this is just a small batch, I'm just using a fork to stir up the eggs. Ah! Drop my fork. See, I'm not wearing an apron. <laughs> we'll see how messy I get. 
My burner's on for my oil. Always check your milk because you never know. This is that shelf stable milk. You don't have to refrigerate until after you open it. And when I get a batch in the oil, I'm going to open up my jars of potatoes, heat them up, then we're going to make mashed potatoes to go with our chicken fried steak. I'm going to add a little bit more milk. Ah, I forgot to wash my hands. Got to wipe this down before I put it back in the fridge. I had egg all over it. Okay. Let's go with egg, flour, back to the egg. Got to wipe out. Go wash my hands again. When I'm doing, working with eggs, I do like to wash up a little bit of soap in between. And you know what? I'm going to get another fork. Because this one's good. I'm going to grab another fork. I'm going to hurry up and get this on the skillet before it gets too hot. And this is to remind me to wipe that down. And then here is my steaks. No, not really a steak, it's some, some kind of a, I forget to call it what kind of meat this is. Okay, so we're going to drench each one in the egg mixture. And I do a double, double drench. So I'll coat it, drip off the excess. Oh. Let me get my spoon. Open it up. Coat the excess. The less you handle it, the better. That's why I'm using spoons. But for me, this is just what I've this is just what I've been doing for the last 20 some odd years. It's ducking again. And then let it drip and dunk it again in the flour mixture. See how I was telling you, you just want to pour a little bit because you don't know how much you're going to need and you don't want to waste this. I'm just taking off the excess and I'm going to put it in the oil. And the oil is pretty darn ready. Turn up the heat just a tad. Let me open my processed potatoes. And I'm going to boil these in a pot with the water that was in the jar. And then I'm going to drain it. Do you hear that sizzling? Put my lid on my potatoes so they hurry up and cook. Let's get another one in here ready. I know you can go ahead and put like two or three in here, but I just tend to do. Oh, I already had one in here. I didn't even realize. Let's get this one. Let's get this one coated first. It turns down my heat now a little bit. It's still on there pretty good. Can you see that? And then second coat of the milk and egg mixture. Bring the excess. And then let's get, let's get this one ready for the fryer.
Okay, so that's in there. Let's get this one out. Woo, oops. Almost had a big mess. Maybe I should have wore my apron. <laughs> Up until I started doing videos, the only time I wore my apron was when I was baking because I didn't do hardly that very often, maybe about four or five times a year. Daughter is the one who does love to bake. And she was always changing aprons. But she's a tiny little thing. She wears zero clothes, size zero clothes. She's five foot, five foot one. She's an inch taller than me, but a lot smaller. <laughs> Double dip. The double dipping it makes it a give you a crustier crust. It's a little bit thicker crust. That's why I like to double dip with the egg and with the flour together. And depending on the size of your pan, you could put two or three or four of these in here. So when they come out of the fryer, you put them on the paper towel so that the, it let it soak up the excess oil, the excess oil. Okay, let's get the other one ready. And then spread this out. Make sure you keep an eye on it because now is the time you need to keep an eye on them so they don't get overcooked. Nothing worse than doing all this and then having it overcooked. And of course you make them like golden brown, but you want to make sure they cook enough so the inside of the meat, but see how thin these things are? This isn't going to take long at all for these to cook. So these are really thin. That's why I figured these would be good for chicken fried steak because they're really thin. It's not really, this is not chicken, this is a beef product. And I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea where the terminology chicken fried steak came from. And you're doing the steak product. Let me double check my very first one. So I can cook a little bit more. I can turn the other one over. And the thing is, when you're cooking chicken, let me turn you over. When you're cooking chicken fried steak or fried chicken, you put it down with hot oil and don't touch it. Don't move it around. Don't push it around. Whatever lands is where it lands. And then you just double check a little bit to see if it's off. I just pick up a piece of the crust. See that? Okay, just to check to see if it's cooked. But you kind of already know. This one folded on me. That's okay. We're going to try to fix it now. Now I get a chance to open it. My little pan is warped. This is my very first one. See how nice and pretty that is? Oh, let me bring it to you. Look at that. You know how nice and pretty? And then there's the other side. So that one is done. And then this one I can flip over. You try to only want to flip it once, and that's it. That's the goal. I'm still oil somehow. I got oil on that handle. Oh, you know what? It's probably when I was showing you with some dribble. That got it. This is the bad part of these spatulas when you have a little groove in there. It collects the liquid. So let's get to the last two. And this is the one time you do need to hurry up. 
And my pot potatoes are boiling, I can see that. And because they're already there, a process, so they're already cooked, all I'm going to do is heat them up and then make them into mashed potatoes. I'm going to ask Kevin to help me with that if I need it. I, don't, I may not need it, the contest help, because this is going pretty smooth, because these are really thin uh, pieces of steak. So we'll see, but I'm going to give myself a double coat. Let's get this other guy out of here. Yep, that flour was just enough for this. And I am very pleased I didn't waste a whole bunch of this flour mix with the seasoning and pouring too much in here. With practice, you'll get to you'll know about how much you need. Just like everything else, it just takes practice. Okay. Now let's get the other one double coated. Then I gotta double check those to make sure they're not over browning. I'm coming toward the end of my flour mixture, and I should have enough to coat them all. And then the egg and milk is going to go down the drain, and the flour is going to go in the trash can. Let me double check. This is the second one that I dropped in there. Oh yeah. That is nice and pretty. There we go. I splattered on that one. Well, luckily it didn't grab me and got it stayed in the pan. Okay, let's turn down this heat on the potatoes. They're going real too far. Let me do my last coating of the flour mixture on these last two because those are already cooked I'm not going to put these in here in there until those are done and this is a messy job look I'm going to show you <laughs> see how messy that is see that that's messy but it's an easy clean up okay now let me grab a spoon Excuse me for the reach there. I got my potato pasher. Oops. These lids get hot, so I like to make sure that I have a hot holder handy. Okay, yeah, these are done. So when the last batch, when I flip them over to the second side, that's when I'm going to drain this. Mash them, add some milk, add some butter, and then we're ready to eat. So this is going to be a nice, quicky little meal. It's taking me roughly 20 minutes to prepare and eat. So this is not bad. See, I'm one of these. I'm one of these lazy cooks. I don't want to take 30 minutes. I mean, an hour, hour and a half to prep something to eat. I don't care to do that. I said, I, I got more things to do, like take a chill peel, enjoy the meal. Let me move this over so, because this is a, it's, it's time for a new pan. This one's warped. But you make do with what you got. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? And see the crust on that thing? Look at that. That's nothing but crust. That's some good eating there. Okay. I think this one's about done. Oh, yeah. That one's for sure done. You see that one? I'm trying to stay in the, over here over this pan because it's dribbling oil and I don't want it to get on my floor. That's a big mess. So let's put the last two in. And then I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. You lay it down, 
Try to lay it down as flat as possible. Don't touch it. And leave it alone. And this is going to go in the trash can. Scrape your fork as much as you can because flour clogs up your pipes. So try not to ever put flour down your pipe. Put it in the trash. Scrape up this extra full of flour that I have a mess on on my little island. All the excess is gone. Get that soap in there. It's hot water for a little bit. And I'm keeping an eye on my chicken fried steak. But I want these to soak because they're going to be ready. That it makes that when you let your dishes soak, it's easier for cleanup time. You don't have to do a whole bunch of scrubbing. my milk container. Put everything in the sink to get ready to wash. Let's check out this thick batch. Okay, yeah. One bad thing about frying is it does look flatter. Ooh, oh. Make sure you get yourself a good grip on your piece of meat. Okay, so now this is done. I can go ahead and put this in a colander. Drain the water. Put this back in here. Oh, I put my milk away. I wasn't supposed to because I need my milk for my potatoes. Let me get my butter and my potatoes. Say, let me get my butter and milk for my potatoes. <laughs> what I should have said. And again, if you want butter and milk, use it. If you don't, just use water. What do what best for you and your family. Remember, this is your kitchen. dinner, both be ready, the potatoes, the side dish, and the main course, practically at the same time. And now I'm just mashing up my butter and milk with the potatoes to make a mushy. We like a little bit of lumps, it's not a whole lot of lumps, but a little bit of lumps. And again, this is where, this is your kitchen, and you make it how you want to make it. Did I use that for that or not? I don't remember if I did or not. I'm going to turn off this heat now. Because 
that is going to finish cooking in the residual heat that's already in the pan. And look at that. Look at those mashed potatoes. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Those I say are done. Put this in the water. This is going to soak. So I don't have to do too much cleanup. Milk and butter is going to go back in the fridge. So all I have to do is serve it up. We get ready to eat. But we're going to, you and I are going to get to do the taste test. Gonna get myself a plate. Let me get it. You know what? This is done. I don't want this to soak and get overly greasy. Oh yeah! Look at that. That is done. So that's totally finished. Move this all away from the heat. All my burgers are toned off. And look, look, see all that grease splatter everywhere? This is where you need yourself a good homemade grease cleaner. And I make my own with citrus water and apple cider vinegar. So let's do the taste test. Oh, I want to just get my clean towel. I want to wipe down my little island so I can move the camera around. Get rid of my mess over here. Throw my egg mixture. See my egg mixture? This is all I had left. I really could have got away with two eggs. I use three because I typically use three for a batch. But again, it also depends on how big your meat is and how big you need it. Give myself a fork. Let me move you back over here. And let's just grab the very first one that was down here. Let's grab me some potatoes. Now, you notice I didn't do any salt and pepper because I have salt and pepper on my plate. I don't season because I like hardly any salt. Hubby loves salt. So let's take a quick little bite. Let's cut right into it. And I'm going to bring you up close to that so you can see that. See how thick it is cooked all the way through, but look at that coating. That is some good coating. That got itself some good crust. And you can hear that crunch, crunch, crunch. So, I'm going to squat down because I don't want to move my camera around. Definitely two thumbs up on this meal. And this meal was made in less than 30 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.